In today's show, we're going to install the Windows PowerShell command lines for Azure, get you connected to Azure, and then show you a couple of my favorite scripts. But first, our intro. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys right there. Apparently for some people that's the highlight of the show is when I point at that. What do you do? Anyway, in today's show we're gonna dive into the Azure PowerShell command lines. There's like 1100 of them or 2100 of them or a million of them, I don't know, there's a bunch. But we're gonna look at how to get um, your Windows PowerShell session configured so that you can connect to Azure, get logged into your account, and then start to manipulate your VMs using PowerShell. So, should be a pretty fun show. The other thing is, is I've done this video eight times now because I keep having hardware issues. As you can see, I've got a new mic. Um, I've installed some new stuff on the PC. So cross your fingers that you guys actually get to see episode number eight because I keep trying and hoping to get one to work. All right, so let's just jump right in. Okay, so here we are on the desktop of a uh, Windows 10 professional uh, VM that I made. So I'm using the 90 day trial. I installed it on Hyper-V. So that way, hopefully it doesn't make Camtasia mad when we're doing the recording. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to hit start, and then you want to just type in power, and then you get the Windows PowerShell. You need to right click on that guy, and you need to run as an administrator, because what we're gonna do is install the modules, and in order to install modules and change the execution policy like we're gonna do, you have to be administrator. So the very first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a start transcript. And if you're not familiar with that command let remember that just gives us a running command or running list of everything we've done. So that way if you do anything bad and you want to go back and look at it, you've got a nice history file there. It's, you can see the path and all that. So should be good for that. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to type in get execution policy. Remember to use your tab complete. And you can see that mine is currently set to restricted. Depending on your environment, yours is, might be different settings, but restricted is what Windows 10 is by default. And so that will not work for installing the Azure PowerShell commands, unfortunately. So what you're gonna to need to do, is you're actually gonna to need to do a set execution policy, and then you're gonna set that to remote signs. You type in remote, you can hit tab complete for that, and press enter. And it's like, hey, changing that's really scary. Are you sure you want to? Well, I say yes. So I'll type in Y and hit enter. And remember, anything you find on the internet, it's true, so it must be safe. All right, so then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a CLS, right? Clear the screen off, so that way we're back to the top. And what we need to do first here is we're going to type in install module, tab complete, and then Azure RM and hit enter. So what this is going to do is this is going to go out to the internet in the online gallery and it's going to pull down the Azure um, Resource Manager PowerShell commandlets for you and install them. It's like, hey, do you really want to pull this stuff off the internet? Are you sure about that? Yes, because Shane says so. So we'll say yes. So now this is gonna start pulling those down, get them on my local machine, and expand them out and do all the heavy lifting for getting these set up for me. Um, what you might see that when you guys run this install module is if it's the first time you've retrieved one from the internet, it'll install the first time something called an NUGET. So if you get a prompt for that also, just go ahead and type Y for that. So that's just the uh, little installer that kind of lets them do things faster. You can also see that that installed pretty fast for me. It's because I've previously downloaded them. I can tell you that normally it takes anywhere from about two to five minutes when I put this on a new machine. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is then type in install module, and this time just the word Azure, then press enter. And actually, you know what? I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit no. And so we're going to do it again. And what I want you to do is I actually want you to do allow clobber. So install module Azure dash allow clobber and hit enter. And so what's gonna happen here is it's gonna warn us again about the repository, so yes again. Uh, but the reason we did allow clobber is there's a command like that, oh, that Azure RM and Azure have in common and they just, they, they argue about who can be in charge. So you just allow clobber, it overwrites it. Best I can tell it doesn't affect anything, it hasn't caused me any issues, it just lets me get through the process. So uh, maybe your mileage will vary, but it's been good for me so far. And so while that's running, um, you might be wondering why do we have Azure RM commandlets and Azure commandlets? Well, the reason for that is that we have a, um, Azure RM is the Azure Resource Manager stuff, right? That's the new Azure experience. That's the new portal, right? Portal.azure.com. It's the new uh, series of stuff. And that's where all of Microsoft's investments are. 
But if you've been using Azure for, for a long time, then you've been using um, Azure Service Manager, Azure SM sometimes. And so that's uh, the classic portal. So anything you see inside the portal that says classic or old rusty stuff, that's all derived from the Azure Classic portal. And you need the Azure commandlets to take advantage of those also. You may or may not need to install both. I go ahead and install both that way. I don't have any surprises when I go to do something that uh, pieces aren't running. And while that's running, what we'll do is we'll switch over here and we'll run Internet Explorer. So start Internet Explorer. But I'm going to go to portal.azure.com. I'm going to log in with my account. You guys are all going to hide your eyes so you don't see my password, right? That's very kind of you. And we'll hit enter there. And now that I've deleted the 30 seconds it took this to open, here is the portal. And so over here on the left, you can see I have two types of virtual machines. So virtual machine classic. And so anything that you have listed in here, and you can see I have one called classic Linux. Anything you have listed here, you'll use the Azure PowerShell commands to control. And then if we hit um, regular virtual machines, so here's my SharePoint 2013 farm, and you'll see um, that anything here, you'll use the Azure RM um, to do. So just kind of keeping that mental break. There's other things that are classic and they'll always be labeled classic. So you kind of have a hint as to what PowerShell command which you might use to work with those. Okay, so let's switch back over to PowerShell. And while this finished running, I'll hit pause. So I'll see you in a second. All right, and so after another minute or so there, it finished up. And so now we're at the prompt, just where we want to be. Yay, prompt. So we'll go ahead and type in CLS to clear our screen back off. Keeps me from getting down there at the bottom. You know, I don't want the PowerShell on my face to get in the way of each other, so. Enter. Okay, and so now that that's uh, done, what we might want to do here is we might start with a little get command, and then we'll do dash module, tab complete, and then Azure RM, and hit enter. And after a few moments there of waiting, you can see they start spewing all the Azure commands out. Or I'm going to hit Control C because I don't want to wait on that to finish. But it gives you a good indication that yes, you got everything successfully installed. Um, so we'll hit CLS again. And what you might do is hit up a couple times there. And we'll wrap those in parentheses real quick. All right, this is one of my little tricks. And then we can do a dot count. And this is how we find out that there's 1,398 PowerShell commandlets for the Azure RM stuff. And then if we go up here and just change this commandlet to Azure, right, for the Azure old stuff, hit enter. There's like 708 of these. Boom, 708, which gives us a grand total of 2,106. Woo! So you guys got plenty of learning to do. And if you're unfamiliar with any of this and you need help learning, right, there is an intro to PowerShell video where I talk about get command, get help, that type of stuff, and how to learn and explore this environment. So if that's what you need to do, then click on the link right over here, and that should take care of that for you, all right? Okay, so that's how we found our stuff. So that's not what you came here to see. So we'll say CLS. And so what I want to do now is I want to type in login Azure RM account. And we're going to press enter. And so this is actually going to give us a nice little pop-up box here that we want to log into. And so all you need to do is put in the um, email account and hit sign in because now it's going to go and figure out is that a Microsoft personal account, is that a work account, is that an Office 365 account, and give you the proper sign-in experience based on what you have. All right, then you guys hide your eyes again while I type in my password and hit sign in. And so then now this is going to start processing. You'll see lots of flickering. And then here in a moment, We'll see, there's all my information. Hopefully uh, you guys aren't stealing my Azure identity because there's my tenant ID and subscription ID. I don't even know if it's safe to show you, so there they are. Um, but so that now that all that is done, we're logged into my Azure subscription. And if you have multiple, multiple subscriptions, you can jump around and change, but I just have one. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say get Azure RM, right? All the commands start with that, Azure RM VM. So there's all my VMs. And we'll just go ahead and hit control C because what it's doing is it's dumping all the objects, all the information. That's too much info for me. And so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to then pipe that over to um, a select statement and say select just name. And so there you can go. You can see I have three VMs, DC1, SP1, SQL1. And those are the three we just looked at over in the Azure portal. So we know that they are sitting there in a stopped deallocated state. I remember deallocated means that they're not consuming uh, compute. So I'm not paying for CPU and RAM, but they also don't have an IP address or any of that assigned to them. So it's saving my Azure bill, but it is costing me, um, or you know, I, I am paying for the storage of those. 
But so those are my three servers that actually makes up the SharePoint 2013 environment that I do a lot of these demo videos on. And so I turn them off and on a lot to try and keep my Azure bill as low as possible. So what I've got for you here, I'm going to paste it in instead of typing it because you don't want to watch me type this much. I'll hit CLS first. And we'll right click to paste. So get Azure RM VMs from the resource group proper 2013. So that's my resource group where uh, my VMs run. And I've talked about resource groups in this video if you don't know anything about resource groups. And then we'll say for each one of those objects over there, start Azure VM, name is that object's name, and then resource group name is the resource group. And then I can hit enter. And so then what this is going to do, we'll go ahead and hit enter. This is going to go out to Azure now and start each of those VMs for me. So it's going to go out, fire them up, allocate new resources to them, which turns on my billing, right? And then fire each VM up one at a time. Uh, so this will take a moment or two. So we'll pause while that runs. But uh, this is just a really handy script for me to use because I like to be able to come in in the morning, fire all my VMs up, and then as I work through the day, do my stuff, and at the end of the day, and after these all finish, I'll show you the stop VM script that allows you to quickly jump to a uh, better setup. I'll hit pause now and I'll see you in eh, five or so minutes when these are done. Okay. Okay. So that took me about 10 minutes to get those three VMs started. Instead of watching cat videos, though, I actually started editing the previous part of the recording, right? Get rid of those ums and the little screw ups I made because you don't want to see those. All right. Uh, one of the things to kind of keep note with though, when you're running and starting these in this automated fashion was essentially it goes and grabs the first one and it goes out and it starts it and it just lets that process run and it doesn't return to the PowerShell prompt until it finishes. So like if you hit ran the script and then you immediately try and hit control C, nothing's going to happen until it finishes working through that first VM. So that can be a little annoying sometimes, a little off-putting, um, but it's just because it can't really stop the process of starting over in Azure. It just has to wait on that process to get done. So just keep that in mind. Control C doesn't work very well for stopping mid starting of a VM, but it does work, you know, if you hit control C when the first VM is processing, once it's done, it won't process the second, third, et cetera, et cetera. So little things like that, just to kind of figure it out along the way. And if we switch over here to my Azure portal again, and you can see now that all my VMs are in the running state. So now they've had IP addresses allocated, they're ready to go. So now I can go do my SharePoint 2013 work for the day. And then once the day is over, right, it becomes 5.30 or in the case of Fridays, it becomes like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, whatever it might be for you. You can run this particular script. So I'll grab this one and paste it over here. And so here you can see it is get Azure RM VM dash resource group 2013, right? So get all the VM strike resource group, same thing as before. And then for each one, do a stop, get the name, what resource groups it from. And you have to do a confirm false force you have to kind of do all this to make sure that it uh, stops everything for you. So I'll hit enter. If you don't, then you'll have to kind of agree to stop each one and deallocate the resources, right? Because this particular script will deallocate the IPs and all that. So it saves me all my compute charges, but I do have to worry about, you know, reconfiguring things the next day. Um, if you don't want to do that, there is a parameter uh, for the stop Azure uh, VM commandlet or Azure RM VM that will avoid uh, that issue. So you do have that option also. Okay, so while all this runs, I'm not going to go watch cat videos. Instead, what I'm going to do is hit start and take advantage of one of the best features of PowerShell, right? So power, so we can run another window, right? Run as administrator. Now, because I started a new one, what I want to do is start my transcript again. So hit enter, so that way I've got an output of everything that happens here. And so now what I want you guys to do is to kind of switch gears and think, okay, what about those classic VMs? Glad you asked. And so the first thing you need to work with those classic VMs is we're going to do add Azure account. So it's not login like the other in this particular one, it's add Azure account. And so then here you can see it's going to pop up that same interface again. So we'll put in my username again and I'll hit sign in because now it's going to go check. It's going to be like, oh, this is a personal account, not a uh, work account. So I'll send him to that environment to log in. So there you go. You guys will close your eyes when I type in my password and then I'll hit sign in. And then we'll get the same blinky blinky as it kind of does the credential passing around. And then boom, there is my uh, subscription. I'm logged in. And so then what I can do here is I'm going to do um, just a good old get Azure VM. And so this is going to do the same thing as um, 
or, or get uh, Azure RMVM, except it's only going to get the classic ones, right? And so the classic one is still stopped and deallocated. And so if I wanted to start those, or start, well, in this case, just the one, I'll grab this script. Actually, we'll do a CLS first just to get us back to the top of the screen. And so we'll do start Azure VM dash service name video demo classic VM. So service name is what they used to call resource groups or the it's earlier big brother, I guess. And so you'll need to know what your service name is. Um, and then you're going to do dash name and star there. So hit enter. If you don't know your service name over here in the portal, right? I could have went to my classic VMs and if we open her up, probably all kinds of confused since it's starting right now. And so now that loaded, you can see there's a video demo classic VMs, or we could switch back over here. And what I could have done also, because we're trying to learn how to do things in PowerShell, right? I could have done get Azure service. And then you would have seen that the service name is video demo classic VM. So, but that gets it there. So my VM, um, the start operation succeeded. So the classic VM is spun up. And just because I'm a nice guy, if you need to stop all of them, we'll grab this script. And we'll type in CLS one more time. And so there's what the, the stop script looks like. Stop Azure VM, service name, video demo classic VMs, dash name, star, dash force, right? And so the, with the old ones, it's kind of fun because you can just do a name and use the star command parameter, right? Whereas in the uh, Azure Resource Manager stuff, we do it in a more traditional fashion in that we get the list of all the VMs, and then we pipe it over to the stop command and we just use it for each object. So um, slight difference, but same result at the end of the day. All right, I think that's enough for one day, right? So we've talked about uh, getting the Azure command that's installed, how to start VMs, how to stop VMs, regardless of what um, particular one you're in. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the old subscribe button here, right? I like subscribers, they keep me motivated. And you can always, if you need any help, hit me up uh, by leaving a comment or hit me on Twitter, at Shane's Cows. If you need help, need some consulting work, wink, wink, right there, bald zebras. I'm always looking for uh, hang out with you guys on a uh, professional basis as well. So anyway, thanks and have a great day.